I'm Chance Dorland, and this is The Docket, our weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you today by the law offices of Pat Maloney. And as always, I'm joined once again by San Antonio Express News courts and crime reporter Elizabeth Zavala with an update on the death of Jose Luis Menchaca, who was 35 when he was beaten with aluminum baseball bats, suffocated and dismembered with his limbs burned on a barbecue grill. Liz, this has been a case we've talked about different sides of the case a few different times here on the podcast. And uh, it still is shocking to, to read that description. Now, what's the new information on this case? Well, Chance, I think we have finally come to the last part of what has been a really gruesome case that began in 2014 and was going through the court system here in Bear County since 2017. So, almost three years now that um, San Antonio and Bear County has been reading about and listening to the uh, horrific details of the death of Mr. Menchaca. Uh, what has happened this week is that Candy Dominguez uh, was sentenced to 30 years in prison for her part in this gruesome slaying of her own first cousin. So, Elizabeth, let's maybe get a uh, review of this case and then talk about this latest hearing involving Candy Dominguez. Yes, well, just to take everybody back, what ended up happening with Jose Luis Menchaca was that they were, he and his girlfriend were supposed to meet with Candy Dominguez and her boyfriend, Daniel Moreno Lopez, whom we've also talked about before. Uh, and they were supposed to uh, trade makeup for drugs, and they were meet. They were supposed to meet on the side of the road, on uh, you know near downtown in San Antonio, off the highway. And at some point, Jose Luis Menchaca stabbed Daniel Lopez in the back. And he went to a hospital with Candy Dominguez and his cousin, Gabriel Moreno, who we've also talked about on, on the podcast, uh, went to the hospital. And during this time that Daniel was being treated for his injuries, uh, it seems through, through testimony now through four different trials that they were concocting some sort of retaliation over this stabbing that involved what really became a botched drug deal. So uh, what happened this week that pretty much ends everything is that Candy Dominguez entered into a plea agreement with prosecutors for testimony that she gave in the trial of Daniel Moreno Lopez and also for Gabriel Moreno. And uh, what that sentence means for her, the 30 years in prison, means because she testified and and agreed to um, talk about her part and what she did in relation to the others that were accused, she will only have to serve, her sentence was basically capped at 30 years. But, you know, what that means is that she will probably have to serve at least 15 of that before she would be eligible for parole. But, you know, the the, uh, the sentencing lasted for a couple of days. And we heard some very interesting things. Uh, in this particular sentencing that happened in the 379th State District Court, which uh, is the court where Judge Ron Rangel is. And Judge Rangel has actually listened to all of these cases involving the death of Jose Luis Menchaca. So as you mentioned, Elizabeth, um, Dominguez did give testimony, um, and she actually 
was called a sociopath by prosecutors, correct? Yes, this was um, during the sentencing that occurred this week. Uh, Candy Dominguez began testifying uh, about her part in this particular crime, and she described uh, how she cut the the arms and the legs off of her cousin after he had died. Now, again, he was testimony established that that Menchaca was beaten, was lured to. Candy Dominguez's house by Candy and a couple of other people, because as we talked about these, this case so many times, there were several people that were eyewitnesses and um, also, you know, defense attorneys, different defense attorneys in this particular case had railed during these trials saying that, my gosh, there are so many people involved, they should have all been charged with something or some sort of, you know, accessory or a party to type thing. But um, they all brought something to the table. And Candy Dominguez, when she had her time in, in her own sentencing, talked about how she helped to dismember her cousin to prepare his body basically to be burned on a barbecue pit so that they could get rid of evidence. Now, what ended up happening, of course, was that uh, they were only able to burn the arms and the legs because this testimony and photographs shown at the trial indicated that uh, his head and his torso were inside of a trash bin that had been buried and then uh, dug back up and moved around, and um, which basically was was kind of how uh, they were able to to arrest, you know, the three people that were involved in this case. But about the sociopath thing, um, prosecutor Jessica Schultz said that Candy Dominguez was at least a sociopath because she showed no remorse, and you know. She she basically said um, on Friday of last week that she helped helped kill her cousin or helped dismember her cousin rather after he had been killed. So when her attorney Tony Jimenez called her back to the stand this week, he he wanted for her to explain a little bit about what she meant. And he asked her again if if she had remorse. And and she said at this time I do not feel remorse. She said she felt nothing but anger up over the whole thing. And she said that she although she's sorry that her cousin lost his lost his life, she said we cannot change things. She said, I accept things for what they are, and I look forward. And then Jimenez asked her if she ever shows emotion. And Dominguez replied, no, I don't. And she said the way she grew up, the way her life was, she said she she grew up basically not, you know, showing emotion because uh, what was brought up during her testimony was that, During her childhood, she was a victim of sexual assault and and years of abusive relationship with men as an adult uh, basically taught her to really not show any emotion. And, and, you know, in in court, I I can definitely say that she did not uh, because this was a sentencing chance. She was basically. Uh, sitting in the jury box by herself because there was no jury in there. This was basically a plea plea agreement. So she was just appearing before the judge with uh, spectators, of course, in the gallery, her, you know, three of her children and also, um, you know, the lawyers and and other uh, 
people who are, who are watching these proceedings. So Liz, that's a great segue. You just mentioned three of her children were there and three of them did in fact give testimony. Tell me about that. You know, Chance, this was just very, uh, I, I was actually very touched by the testimony from her three daughters. Uh, Candy Dominguez's three daughters uh, who testified uh, asked Judge Rangel for leniency for their mother, whom they admitted participated in what they called a horrific crime. But they said that for the reason that their mom had become that particular way in that she was, you know, participating in this was it was because of years of drug abuse. And uh, they mentioned that there in their family dynamic, there was there were people who abused drugs, and there were also people who abused alcohol. But they they talked about a house fire that happened in 2014 that they say changed everything for them. One of her daughters, Brenda Galvan, who's 19 years old, uh, was very emotional in her testimony. And, and talked about a time before her mother got heavily into drugs. And, and testimony during all three of the trials uh, established that they were uh, using methamphetamine. So Brenda Galvan talked about how her mom was kind of like her best friend until she got into drugs. And she tearfully said, I don't understand why it had to be this way because she was an awesome person. Uh, another daughter, Brittany Olmedo, 23 years old, she credited their mother with uh, pushing her and basically all three of her daughters to attend college. And Brittany talked about uh, attending a college for two years and she had to quit uh, to help her family out after this fire broke out in 2014. And another daughter, Brandy Galvan, is 22 years old. She actually adopted all of the younger siblings of Candy Dominguez and their father after she said their father committed suicide and their mother was in jail. So uh, she works now and she is raising her siblings. And, um, but also, you know, asked that her mother receive a fair sentence. And then I guess uh, finally here, Liz, before we say goodbye, you know, this gruesome crime certainly is part of the reason that um, this crime has gotten so much press. And, and the fact there are multiple trials, you know, that that tends to uh, include uh, trials that tends to to increase the amount of attention as well. Um, but also there were some convictions. There was someone who was not convicted. There were retrials. And also, there we talked about this before on the podcast. There was an outburst. Um, there was worries of uh, safety in in the courtroom. Um, I'm guessing Candy Dominguez didn't have that type of drama in this plea deal, correct? You know, actually, Chance, she did not. And and I think that that you know maybe there is you know something uh, to be said about you know, her, her lack of emotion, because they're really, even though she saw her daughters, you know, very emotional up on the stand asking, you know, for leniency, asking for a just punishment. Um, you know, she basically remained calm in court. Uh, she did, she never faced the gallery when her daughters were testifying, but when, um, judge rang hell, uh, sentenced her to the 30 years, uh, she, you know, exited the courtroom, escorted by bailiffs, and, and there was no drama. Now, you know, we will recall that 
her ex-boyfriend, Daniel Moreno Lopez. He was convicted of murder in June of last year. And he had to be physically removed from the courtroom when he erupted in anger at the verdict. And that particular issue uh, caused the courthouse in Bear County, the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, to be under heightened security, especially on the fourth floor when his nearly three day hearing was uh, conducted in, uh, it actually eerily started on Halloween. And uh, a couple of days later, in the very beginning of November, Lopez was sentenced to life in prison for his role in Menchaca's death. Now, he's going to have to serve 30 years before he'll be eligible for parole, which because in Texas, a life sentence is about 60 years. So if he were to be released, he would have to remain on supervision for the rest of his life. So he's 32 years old. In 30 years, he'll be 62 if, you know, he is eligible for parole and is, is actually released. Now, and, and his proceedings marked the second time he was tried. And that first trial in 2017, uh, ended in a mistrial because Candy Dominguez at that time admitted on the witness stand that she was bipolar and schizophrenic after she talked about her role in the killing, which prompted Daniel Lopez's attorney, J. Charles Bunk, to ask for a mistrial because uh, had he known ahead of time that Candy Dominguez had mental health issues, he argued to the court that he would have approached jury selection differently in that case. So because of that and some allegations of prosecutorial misconduct, which really did not, I don't think any of that factored into this. This really had everything to do with the fact that, that um, Bunk did not realize that there was a mental health issue there. Uh, but, you know, there was a mistrial in that. And that's why we went back the trial again with Daniel Lopez. Now his cousin, Gabriel Moreno, also was tried twice in Menchaca's killing. What happened there was proceedings in Gabriel Moreno's first trial started February 23rd of 2018, and it lasted for about a week. But after four days of deliberation by the jury, Rangel declared a mistrial March 9th after jurors told him they were hopelessly deadlocked. Now, in, in that case, um, as probably what happened in the retrial that happened for Gable Moreno in December, uh, there really wasn't a DNA or something really concrete that 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 matched up to Gabriel Moreno that really you know had the jurors able to say that he was guilty so when he was retried in December the jury found him not guilty of Jose Luis Menchaca's murder so uh Gabriel Moreno was not convicted in that case so in the end, um, we have two people who were tried. One was not guilty. And the third person basically made a plea deal to uh, give her testimony in exchange for a lighter sentence. But that lighter sentence, again, is 30 years. And she'll have to serve at least 15 of that before she's eligible for parole. So it, it does end, I guess, for us, um, discussion about this particular case. Um, although I will remind, I will remind you that in the reach in the sentencing rather of Daniel Lopez, it was revealed that two months prior to the death of Jose Luis Menchaca, that, um, 
Lopez could have killed his girlfriend and disposed of her remains in the in very much the same way that um, Jose Luis Menchaca was was killed and and his body um, dismembered. And thank you to San Antonio Express News Courts and Crime Reporter Elizabeth Zavala for joining me for today's episode of The Docket, our weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you today by the Law Offices of Pat Maloney. For the San Antonio Express News, I'm Chance Dorland.